Squaly Plains. Huh, I never would have gotten that. How can you tell? Oh. Okay, then. So you do live up to the hype. <laughs> I can't believe you noticed that. You sure have an eye for detail. Let's head over there and take a look. I'll need you to help me zero in on the specific location once we're there. It should be around here, right? Hmm? Who are they? Oh, it's a bunch of treasure hoarders. <laughs> I guess the treasure's for real, then. There are quite a few of them. If things go south and fists start flying, stay behind me. I'm more than a match for these amateurs. Keep digging, boys! Once we have our hands on the treasure, everyone gets a share! You can all hold it right there! Huh? Who's that barking orders? Do you know who you're up against here? Keep going if you got a death wish! Uh, what the? It's. It's. C -c Captain B -B -B Beto! Run, boys! Run! Nobody move! Uh... Captain Beto! Lord of the ocean. This is all my fault. I didn't know who I was up against. I, I don't have a death wish. I swear. I got a big mouth is all. It's always saying things it shouldn't. I swear I'll wash it out with soap the moment I get back. Please, have mercy. Will you spare us? <laughs> <sighs> well, spare them, at least. These guys are just trying to put food in their mouths. They'd never hurt a soul. If you need to take anyone, take me. Please, let them go. It was me that disrespected you. They never did and never would. Is that right? Fine. Seems like you've got a heart in there somewhere, seeing how you treat your crew. I'll let you off the hook this time. Get out of here! Thank you, Captain Beto. Thank you. Wait. Yes? What else might the merciful and mighty Beto require? This treasure's still up for grabs. The Crux Fleet honors the rule of first come, first served. You found it first, so name your price. I can't have any rumors going around about Captain Beto stealing other people's treasure, can I? Captain Beto! We wouldn't dare take Mora from you! D take the treasure, as an apology for my foolish words. Please, take it. Please. Oh? Well, if you insist. I accept your kind offer, and I'll make you one in return. You don't seem like terrible folks, so let me help you get onto the right track. If you want to mend your ways and put all this behind you, the Crux can probably arrange some odd jobs in the port for you. It'd be humble work, but at least it'd get you on your feet and making an honest living. A much better deal than what you've got going now, if you ask me. Wow, uh, thank you, Captain Beto. On behalf of me and all my boys. Right. <laughs> Let's see what we've got in here. <sighs> this isn't what we're looking for. Let's look around. Maybe we'll find it. Those rocks look kind of weird. Let's see if there's anything there. Let's keep looking. What are those hilly trolls digging for? Wait, actually, I've heard they sometimes dig for buried treasure. Let's go take a closer look. Thunder! 
Nope, not here either. <sighs> now that we've searched all the places of interest in this area and come up with nothing, uh, you got any ideas? It's a... Uh... Captain Beto! Captain Beto! Huh? Hey, what brings you back here? Captain Beto! Actually, we've just been wandering around nearby. We didn't go far... Because we were thinking about what you said, and... Well, me and the boys decided... We're ready to move away from all of this and get on the straight and narrow! Oh? Are you sure? Yes. Absolutely sure. Okay then. But I'll warn you right now, you won't have it easy. It might just be menial work in the port, but in the eyes of the general public, you'll be associates of the Crux. So there'll be a grueling test you have to go through before you can start. I understand, I understand. Truth be told, Captain, it's only because it's you, the mighty and honorable Captain Beto. If it had been anyone else, I don't think I'd have listened. And since you made us this kind offer, I'd like to ask, if I might be so bold, is there any hope at all for us to become full members of the Crux in the future? Even the tiniest shred of hope? <laughs> well, there's no place in the Crux for delusions of grandeur, that's for sure. But then again, everybody has to start somewhere. So, it comes down to you. If you manage to impress me and earn the respect of my crew, then, yeah, nothing's impossible. Uh, thank you, Captain Beto. Thank you a thousand times over. I couldn't help but notice you were searching for something else. It still hasn't turned up. Why? Do you have any clues? We heard about two treasures, both in Gwaley Plains. We were still looking for the first one when you found us. So maybe the other one might be what you're looking for. Not too far from here, but I'm just not sure of the exact location. All the info we got about this treasure came from the black market. The answer's hidden inside a poem which goes like this. <clears throat> Drunkenly I gazed at the ruins long forsaken, and lay beneath red leaves whose branches cast a crooked shade. The dusk sun shone upon the sea as I awakened, but Guyan stood twixt weary eyes and the sight of home they crave. As for the ruins long forsaken part, I do know of some ruins near here. But beyond that line, I just... I don't... I'm just not smart enough. <laughs> so a treasure clue hidden in a poem, huh? Don't worry, we got this. See my friend here? If they taught treasure hunting as an art form, you'd probably be calling him Grandmaster. This kind of thing's a piece of cake for him. Am I right? <laughs> okay, then. Let's start by heading to the site and surveying the scene. Maybe we'll find some other clues over there. Okay. Come on, boys. You heard the captain. Lead the way. These are the long, forsaken ruins from the poem. Apparently, they were once full of treasure. But judging by the state of them now, it's probably long gone. Hmm, it seems that we need to dig deeper into this poem. Drunkenly I gazed at the ruins long forsaken, and lay beneath red leaves whose branches cast a crooked shade. The dusk sun shone upon the sea as I awakened, but Guyan stood twixt weary eyes and the sight of home they crave. <sighs> Do you have any ideas? Ah, somewhere you can see the ruins from. So, somewhere not too far from here? Yeah, and maybe the shadow cast by the tree is supposed to hint at something. Oh, I got it! This guy fell asleep and woke up just before sunset! Dusk and the shadow of a red-leaf tree. Hmm, I think we can work with that. Let's take a look around. I think we're getting close. Found it! At long last, the treasure is finally in our hands! A check from the Northland Bank. 
You really came through. We found the spot in no time. Without your help, I don't think I ever would have gotten my hands on it. To us, this is just a check that you can exchange at Northland Bank for some Mora. But to some people, it's of huge importance. When I found the treasure map, it was tightly sealed inside a small bottle along with a letter. I'll let you read it for yourself. Finished? Yeah. I can't fault him for what he did, but the way things turned out... All I can say is, life is unpredictable. Well, let's fulfill his final wish by taking this check to where it belongs. We're making progress. Let's crack open a bottle to celebrate. I'm the captain, so you can be my first mate, deal? <laughs> Such names are too outdated for you, huh? We'll call each other whatever you wish, then. Well, this is it. Oh, boys! It's time for your first job! Give this check to the old lady who lives in that wooden hut. Tell her it's a welfare payment from the Liyue Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yes, boss! What's up? <laughs> I see. But you only find Sakura Blooms in certain places, right? It must have been quite a bit of work collecting all these, surely. Let's just pick one, huh? One's enough to show that you care. You've already helped me out so much today. Okay, off you go then. Take her the Sakura Bloom along with the check. And if she asks, tell her... Your child in a faraway land sends his best wishes. I'm glad you came. Welcome back aboard. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take that. Some rumors have it that the leader of the Crux is so powerful that she could slay the mighty Leviathan Hyshawn without breaking a sweat. I can't go getting too caught up in my own reputation, though. That's certainly not how the Crux made it to where we are today. As the head of the fleet, my task is to keep us on the right course, no matter how turbulent the seas may become. But then again, the crew isn't usually this riled up. It's not that they're arrogant, they're just bubbling with ambition, that's all. Their excitement today comes from their great respect for you, both your strength and your character. So please, don't take it the wrong way. Oh, is that so? Well, it just so happens that we're doing some recruitment and training for new crew members while we're back. It'll be a first-rate chance to learn the life of a sailor. Since you're interested, why don't you come along and experience a sailor's life firsthand? I'm curious to see if you'll take the sea by storm in the same way you have on land. <laughs> nice. <laughs> come with me. Let's see how big of a splash you can manage. Yo, good morning. I'm about to head off. Coming with me? Chief Mate Juza's breaking in the newcomers, but I think we can spare you the tedium of that. After this, the new crew members will be arranged into two teams for more specialized training, according to their own aptitudes and the needs of the fleet. One team will learn comprehensive survival skills, including maritime emergency rescue, marine meteorology, psychological counseling, and so on. They will serve as the support team for the fleet, ensuring safe navigation. That's why we call them the Shield of the Crux. <laughs> That's right. You catch on quick. As one might expect, we call the other team the Spear of the Crux, because they'll be learning about naval warfare. They'll make up the armed portion of our crew. Also, they're responsible for handling the fleet's cargo deals. So, what do you think? 
Which team is for you? <laughs> you truly are an adventurer at heart. Let's start with the fundamentals for any armed crew member. Basic boat handling. Follow me. These are some older skirmish boats that we keep on the Alcor as backup. Although they've been made redundant by newer models now, they're still fully kitted out. They're perfect for when we need to do simulated battles as part of crew training. <laughs> Disappointed? So this isn't quite on the scale that you had in mind, huh? To be honest, the Alcor going into battle is the last thing I'd ever want to see. In fact, out of all the confrontations we've ever had, almost all were resolved by negotiation. Only when negotiations fail do we consider deploying our armed fighters and skirmish boats, and they alone are enough to handle most situations. The only reason the Alcor would ever need to open fire would be if it were a fight to the death. The Alcor serves only two purposes, to deter or to destroy. We are an armed fleet with a strong sense of justice, not war-hungry lunatics. We're very careful about determining when to use force and exactly what level of force to use. All of this to say that mastering a small attack craft is quite enough for new crew members. Do you have any experience piloting small armed vessels? <laughs> You're the first person I've ever met who's so dismissive of the power of the sea. But I guess to put it another way, you're already a seasoned veteran, huh? In that case, I'll skip the basics on how to operate your craft. The goal of this exercise is simple. Steer your skirmish boat along the prescribed route and return here within the time limit. You can start when you're ready. I'll be waiting here so I can observe your skills. Start whenever you're ready. Don't keep me waiting too long. Show me how it's done. done. That was a joy to watch. Perfect timing on the turns, you kept your craft stable on the straightaway. It was like watching a well-rehearsed show. <laughs> All right. It's high time I introduced you to some of the more serious business that the Crux takes on. Come with me. We're going to Liyue Harbor. You may be aware that, as an armed fleet, the Crux is kind of like the maritime equivalent of a guard for hire. We work as an armed carrier, earning our keep by successfully delivering the goods entrusted to us from A to B. Aside from that, though, there is also one other important way we make income. Actually, it's trading in certain kinds of goods. Hey, my hotshot accountant. Nice of you to join us. <laughs> Cut it out, boss. Juza sent me here with a message. He says preparations are now underway. If you give me the all clear, I'll head straight over. Okay. Be careful. Well, she has something to take care of. Mora Grubber was right, though. The other important side to our business, the less official side, is doing exactly what merchants do. Importing here, exporting there. The only difference between us and regular merchants is that our transactions aren't entirely above board. You'll see what I mean by that shortly. I'm taking you to see one such transaction for yourself. Come on, let's go meet our trading partner for the day.
Fresh seafood! Fresh seafood! Catch it while you can! What do you have? Hello there! Here at Nay's Professional Fishmongers, we've got everything you could ask for. So what do you need? I want a bass head with all the teeth removed. If there's a single tooth in there, I don't want it. Ah! Huh? You know bass have pharyngeal teeth, right? In the throat? How do you expect me to get all those out? Then I'll have a bass trunk with two swim bladders. Again, if it's short by one swim bladder, it's not the bass I want. You're not making this easy for me. One bass means one swim bladder. Afraid that's not up to me. Okay. Then I'll take a bass tail with scales that are yellow on the outside, black on the inside. Also, it's gotta have a total of 81 scales. That's 7 times 7, no more, no less. What kind of fish scales are yellow outside and black inside? You sure this is a fish you're talking about? In any case, you can try all you want, but 7 times 7 is never gonna get you 81. Pardon my asking, but you're not a fish expert, are you? Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but, uh, I'm afraid I don't have any of the things you're looking for. Look, I'm a professional. So are most of the people I serve. I can accommodate anything they ask for. Seems you two are amateurs. So I'm sorry, but you'll have to go someplace else. Anywhere you'd recommend? <laughs> Like I said, Nay's Professional Fishmongers is for professionals. For amateurs, the place to go to would be Wise Amateur Fishmongers. I bet you're wondering why that guy was saying he didn't have what we wanted. That was just the first step in the transaction to confirm our identity. The real deal will come later. Fresh seafood! Fresh seafood! Come take a look! Is this wise amateur fishmongers? That's the one! We have all kinds of amateur stuff here. The more amateur, the more of it we got. What would you like? We'd like a bass head. No problem. Ours are all toothless, mind you. And a bass trunk. Oh, no problem. I'll stick an extra swim bladder in there for you. On the house. And a tail. Sure thing. I'll paint the scales yellow on the outside and black on the inside, so you can tell at a glance, this ain't no ordinary fishtail. If it's seven times seven you want, I can do you 81, 138, or even 648. <laughs> it's up to you. Great. I like your style. We have a deal. I appreciate your patronage. Please, take your order to our warehouse manager over there. <laughs> a real amateur, if I've ever met one. Proud to have you as a customer. No, we don't have the fish here. All fish sold at Wise Amateur Fishmongers are still swimming in the sea. Once we get the order in from the customer, we go fish it out for them. The warehouse handles that side of things. Pay first, then we bring you the goods. That way you get the freshest catch. Fresh seafood, fresh seafood, come take a look. Are you two here to collect your order, huh, Bade? <coughs> yes, sir. We're here about that bass. I didn't expect you to come in person, but we still need to follow procedure. 
The bass you want is not a standard specimen. Our fishermen need to wait for the right moment to catch it. You know the rules, I take it? Of course. Oh, <laughs> well, as you know, timing and location are everything when it comes to fishing. You have to wait till all the conditions are just right. That means the tide, the moon, and the wind. So, let me ask you this. When will the tide come in? The fishing song will sound out at midnight. How drunk will the moon be before the party's over? It won't stop while the Star of Death shines. I see, yes. Uh, which way will the sea breeze be blowing? The breeze should be bound for Guyon. All right, then. Well received. I'll go and make arrangements. Uh, <clears throat> Great. I think that wraps up everything we needed to do in Liyue Harbor. Let's head back and wait for the delivery. The three people we just met are our business partners. Nay's professional fishmongers and Wise amateur fishmongers are just cover names. The bass, obviously, is the code name for the goods. The numbers of teeth, swim bladders, and scales all represent different specifications. Meanwhile, the conversation I had with the warehouse keeper was the instructions for the deal itself. Let me translate it for you. Tonight at midnight, the deal will take place in Guyan Stone Forest. The Alcor will wait there as long as needed. As for what the actual goods are, well, you'll see tonight. What if I were to say yes? What would you do then? <laughs> Thank you. But don't worry, everything will be fine. I deeply value you as a friend, but ultimately, you're not with the crux. I definitely don't want to cause you any trouble just because you hung out with me. So rest assured, we haven't broken any laws. <laughs> At least not today.